You followed all of the Amazon Guru's SEO advice. You stuffed that exact match keyword in the title. You've got the PPC campaign, the alt text, the search term field has this keyword. But whatever you do, it just won't stick on the top of Amazon. You even tried giveaways, which pushed it to the top of page one for like one or two days, but then it fell off. Why won't this keyword stick? The answer it's your conversion rate sucks. I'll explain why. This is my video um, on how to get a keyword unstuck. My name is Stephen Pope, and I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. So first thing I'm going to do is go through all of these different fields I mentioned, right? So the when, when you're looking at a product, this is my Age of Sage smudge kit. You can see an actual live page right here. Um, and, and you always want to have exact match keywords in the title. All of those things I gave in my intro are actually really good ideas. I want to be very clear. But I'm going to explain why after you follow all of these good ideas that sometimes it doesn't work and, and why and how to troubleshoot that. So let's just take um, a keyword that we've been working on. So uh, we've got Sage sticks bundle for cleansing house negative energy. We've got lots of different things in here. I think we have on the three pack. Yeah, let's go to the three pack here. We did a little bit slightly difference between the variations, which sometimes can be beneficial. Um, in case you don't know, keyword rankings are actually stored at the child level, not the parent. And, and so if you broke up the parentage, then all of the children will also rank up in search results. We, we get a lot of questions about why to parent things or why not to parent things. And, and the biggest reason to not parent things sometimes and separate the variations out is because you have multiple variations that can index on their own. So you show up for more keywords uh, on the search results. So if we took, for example, Sage Bundle for Cleansing House, went over to the search term field right here and typed it in, I'm going to show up right there, which is cool. And that's great. I've got a high organic rank. Um, I think that's like organic rank number four for that particular term. But if I could rank three products on page one and had it at rank four, but also had it at rank 10 and had it at rank 15, um, and that's my ad right there, that would be more beneficial. And that's why you might want to separate it out. Now, I'm never going to separate my variation pack sizes because I want people to show up and say, hey, I can get $10 three pack or I can go over to the six pack right here and only pay $3 extra and, and uh, get six six of them instead of three. So I have I have a strategy behind all of these um, settings and whatnot. All right, so here are the fields. Let's go through the list. So we've got title. This is the most important SEO field. Uh, it's important because uh, it, it, it allows the indexing. It shows up in the search page. It's the most visible thing. It helps with conversion rate. It helps with keyword rankings. You should spend significant time editing your titles and tweaking them and going back and forth, um, which is why I have so many videos where I tweak my titles and I'll just like switch one phrase in a particular video and then I'll do a video update and explain like, oh my gosh, my keyword traffic is up and my brand share is up. All right, so title, most important. Then when we go to the back end, we're going to go over to, and they just updated the back end. So sometimes it takes a second to like get used to like, why are they putting things all over the place, right? So you get a product description, bullets. These aren't as important though as our keyword field, which I'm trying to track down now. Uh, so it's not on the variation. See, geez, where did they put this? Uh, one second. Founder, they moved it down to generic keyword down here. Um, used to be another keywords tab up there like a week ago, I swear. Anyway, so in here, you also can get an exact match. You don't need to have any commas um, in your generic keywords. You also don't need to have both the plural and the singular. However, on new products, I sometimes put both just to get an index faster. Um, and, and this word right here, like this word for sage, it will permutate, that is combine with every other phrase in the combination here. So that's why you don't need commas. That's why you don't need to worry about um, repeating the word sage, sage kit, sage stick, sage, whatever. All of that's already done based on how it's currently standing. So you want to get an exact match into the search term field here. Don't forget 249 bytes go into the search term field, not characters. You can see um, that information is, is readily available. Here, I'll prove it to you. I'm just going to type in a random letter here, and you're going to see the error show up eventually. And where it says, yep, there, there it was. Hey, value for generic keyword, no longer than the allowed maximum. What is that? 250 bytes? 
Yeah, that's right. Not characters. No spaces are counted against you, right? So if we were to delete this down and then just put in a bunch of spaces like this, we would not trigger the error message. Spaces do not count, which means you can put lots of small words in there. No problem. All right, so generic keyword search term field called many different things depending on the variation um, or the category you're in and how Amazon wants to label it week to week. Okay, from there, bullets. These are going to be the next most important. You do want to have value props in here. Not very many people actually read these, but you do want to put in information that will help it rank into the bullets. Um, at this time, the product description field is not as important as it used to be, and that's because when you scroll down, A-plus content is showing up instead, which replaces the product description field. There, We, we haven't really been able to ascertain whether making edits to the product description will make a difference on keyword rankings. Um, I, I do keep mine filled in just in case, but it's hard for us to measure it. Um, so in A plus content, we absolutely know this index is true fans who followed and subscribed to the channel. know I talk about this all the time. You want to put 500 words of copy in the A plus content because that absolutely indexes, absolutely indexes. I'm going to say it three times because it absolutely indexes. And if it indexes, what does that mean? You need to put 500 words of copy into the A-plus content. For those that don't believe me, who haven't followed the channel and the 1,000 videos I've put out, you can test this yourself right now. Put in 100 characters of alt text into one of these photos for Spanish in Spanish phrasing, and it will index in under 48 hours. That's how confident I am that A-plus content indexes. And you can also test it out by putting um, phrases like this. I put Spanish in my header right here, and guess what? ranking went up. I got more traffic. It does freaking work. Um, so there you go. A plus content, super important. You have all this text you can do. Um, the brand story is an extension. This is a new module. Absolutely want to have um, keywords in here too. There's so much text availability where you can flush this out, build lots of things in there. Uh, and then let's go and look at the inspect element inside of here. I'm going to look at the code on the right-hand side. This is HTML code on the right. Image alt equals sage candles for cleansing house. Notice how I'm really focused on that keyword right now. So I'm putting it in the alt text. I'm putting it in the title. I'm putting it in everywhere I can, including random places. There's a header right there. Most people won't even pay attention or read it. doesn't matter. It's okay. The images are for the human eye. The text is for the robots. And once you understand that and tell your designer that SEO is more important than design and aesthetics and they have a croak and then you tell them, no, I'm serious. Traffic is 10 times more important than uh, tr uh, than, than conversion because you, you can double your traffic 10 times easier than conversion rate. All right, so those are the main fields. Those are the playing fields of search terms. You can also create PPC campaigns and, and build those out to help with your ranking efforts. So you've done all of these things. You've, you're watching this video because you want to know what the solution is because you've done all these things already. And if you haven't done these things, obviously go do them, right? Uh, but, but if you haven't done these things and you're trying to, or if you have done these things, you're trying to troubleshoot, what is the next step? You have a conversion problem. So if you've done all these steps, you even tried the rebate giveaways, don't do that. Uh, you've even tried all of these different things to get your keyword to the top of page one, but it just won't stick. So your problem is not an SEO problem at this point. It's actually a conversion rate issue. So here's how I can prove that. First of all, take any keyword that you're struggling to rank on and just type it in up here into the search results. So Sage Bundle for Cleansing House if you look at your competitors and your competitor products are different, they've got kits and you don't have a kit, and something else is showing up in search results, I obviously do rank for this, but if I didn't, I would look at the other products in the list here to figure out what they have that I don't have. The next thing that I would do is I would look at, and I got a nice Amazon's Choice badge there, woohoo! Um, what I would do next is look at the secondary images. And I wouldn't say these are the best images of all time, mind you. Like, I, I, I like to run, um, you know, super small budgets when I run my own product offering just to prove what I can get away with as, as an Amazon guru, right? And, and so these are not the greatest images of all time. My product freaking does sell thousands of units a month, though. Um, and so there, there's proof you don't have to have perfect images, but if 
But if we were going to look at this and we did have a conversion problem, the, the next thing to do would be to look at these images and figure out like what we could do to improve it, right? So for example, image one and two, there's not a whole lot of difference between these two things, not a whole lot of benefits. So that would be the first image I would ax. Um, and, and, and I would look at the infographics and say like, what else could we do to level this up? We have an instructions in here because the product is super hard to understand that, yeah, you just burn it, right? Like <laughs> sometimes when you have to explain how to use a product, we put that in there. Um, and this is a Photoshop job or some random stock photo of some kind, right? Same thing with that one. Um, and we do have a video in here, but the, the image stacks, th things that you could do to improve this would be to humanize lifestyle, put in your customer avatar, like who is the, the number one um, person that's trying to purchase the product. Make sure the secondary images possess content that really help the consumer put themselves in the shoes of this product so they know who they are. As an example of how I'm getting my own customer avatar wrong for my Amazon guy and how I'm trying to fix it, right? So I'm, you know, I've got like a hat on my head. I look like a, you know, a disheveled Gary V character, which is actually kind of how I feel about myself. But, but the point is when, when you get on my, my page and you see all these photos and then randomly you see a piece of mine with some yoga, when my customer avatar is probably more like a 35 to 55 year old male who probably has never done yoga, I, I am personally working on replacing this right now. <laughs> so this is an example of how you need to address who your customer avatar is, go into the brand analytics and look at who actually purchases the product. So um, it's very valuable to do that. You can go over to the brand analytics tab, put your cursor over brand, brand analytics, and in here, go look at the demographics. So if you're wondering who buys it, so this is, um, and I don't know if they actually, so separate the brands out. So let's just look at Age of Sage, right? Uh, and hit apply, and we're gonna look at the last week. So the people that buy Age of Sage are, are proportionately lower in age than Momster, which we're gonna apply and see see how that Momster brand is between right around that 50 age mark, but my Age of Sage brand is hitting a younger demographic. That means I need younger women on my Age of Sage brand. It's more hip, right? People who don't have kids don't wanna be a Momster. That, that brand choice was an interesting one on my part, um, M-O-M-S-T-I-R. I actually thought it was really clever, but clearly Age of Sage is a stronger brand name um, going down. So anyway, so let's say, you know, we're looking at the um, the Momster brand here. Uh, so let's go over and just select Momster and hit apply here. So this one, age is older. And then as we scroll down, we can see their household income and all that cool stuff, their education. I, I don't think any of the household income or education will be that actionable of a data set. But what is actionable is the gender data. And here we can see 67% of all of my customers on Amazon for this brand are female. Now, many of you are gonna make some assumptions about who buys your product. And many of you are gonna get it wrong. And, and I see this time and time again, when I'm looking at conversion issues and I'm trying to figure out who the customer avatar is, simply going to the brand analytics tab, clicking on this demographics and scrolling down and looking at the gender will will often change your direction like that. It's super important to know and understand this because what if you were trying to market to men but the females are the ones buying it? Well, you need to completely change the listing and, and swap the customer avatars out or vice versa. So that's a really important one. The next thing you can do to fix your conversion rate is go and look at the search query performance report. So. I'm gonna show you a good example and then I'm gonna show you a bad example. So Sage Candles for Cleansing House. I have a 7.52% brand share on this term. That's actually pretty good, right? And it's a 2100 search volume. So almost 8% of people click on my or see my product. But then as we go through the funnel, I get 20% of all the clicks, which means that a lot of people who see it have a higher click proportion on my product versus somebody else's which is fantastic. The Amazon's Choice Badge could be helping me out on this one. As we go down the funnel, what happens? The brand share actually goes up again, which means that my conversion rates, as I go deeper into the marketing funnel, we went from impression to click and now to cart ad, it went up again. And then as we scroll to the far right, I lose a little bit here. I actually, the purchases go down to 18.85. So 
I had more click uh, or add to cart curiosity, but then they went and bought somebody else's product. So here is an example of, of it generally going up in the funnel, the farther down we go. And then at the last second, it dips down a little bit. Still a really strong purchase percentage, 18.8%. That's pretty incredible, uh, all things said and done. But it is a slight dip. And so if we look at another keyword, though, and go to the far left and look at Sage, just as a generic keyword, I get 4.8% of the brand share. So what happens when we go down further? 3.8, I took an immediate hit. That means I don't convert as well on just the word Sage. That, and if it's a click issue, a CTR issue, it's always the main photo, always, always the main photo that you have to go and fix. So if we go back to the product in question, so if I had a CTR issue, here is where it would be. I would need to fix it at this photo. The main photo is so incredibly important. Secondary image is also becoming more and more important as well. But um, when we look at the search query um, performance report and we get farther down in here, the percentage drops off. It goes down to 3.85%. Then on the card ads, 2.53%. It just goes down and down and down. And then finally, 1.94%. So this is an example of I'm losing conversion. I need to action this. I need to go fix this. I need to update the images. I need to update the content and figure out who the customer avatar is. So check out these other videos where we talk about SEO. I've got a master class you're going to want to check out. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this and any questions you have. I personally answer them all myself. Thanks for watching.